Uh, let's take a look at also uh, some other tools kind of like that were uh, asked for a very long time. So uh, 2012 introduces also a 2D transform node. It's very straightforward. Essentially, uh, there you go. You have the ability to uh, uh, do a, a transformation on the, uh, on the input footage. Um, and uh, again, it's uh, position, uh, rotation. And interesting to note, it's also, it actually also supports uh, a 3D rotation. Actually, 2D Transform uh, has uh, two modes, one that is strictly 2D and will provide you access with some of the resize algorithms, such as Langsauce, that uh, preserve a lot the detail. And it also has a perspective mode. You can switch from one to the other, but you will notice that when you're in perspective, obviously, you can actually have 3D Transform that get applied to your, uh, to your images. But if you switch back to pan and scan mode, it will strictly uh, 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 consider only the 2D the transforms, so the position and the scaling, not in rotation. Uh, and this is because some of the algorithms like um, Langsos simply are not made to support, uh, uh, to support rotation. So if you're after something that provides you like an easy way of rescaling uh, and repositioning and maintaining a lot of the detail uh, using the algorithms that you have currently in resize, just think about switching to pan and scan mode. If you're in for uh, 3D transforms, uh, it, well, there you go. You can do this, and you still have access to all the filtering, uh, the filtering um, uh, qualities that you uh, that you have today inside of Action. That includes EWA in conjunction of EWA with Linear. There's a super fast, uh, there's a super fast anti-aliasing routine that's GPU accelerated uh, that you can activate, and also a super fast motion blur uh, algorithm that can be applied. Also, one thing to note, to, to note is that you can accumulate a camera shake effect uh, with any kind of 2D transform. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, if you're if you're looking to actually uh, do very quickly some kind of random motion and jittery motion, think about 2D transform. It will it will do the job. So just activate camera shake and uh, punch in the numbers that you uh, that you want, and it'll start doing some jitter. And this is on top of any animation that you would have done on the axis. So something that's uh, kind of cool. Um, we're, um, we're also introducing uh, a new node, which is called Blend and Comp, which uh, essentially allow you to perform uh, blending operations uh, 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 between two different inputs over a background. Uh, blend and Com supports a whole array of different uh, uh, of different blend modes, and that would include the Photoshop blend modes, the GIMP blend modes, and the Flame blend modes. So you can dis you within Blend and Comp you can control how input one and input two blend together, and you can also control the way that they then blend over a background of your choice. Um, uh, each of the inputs can be color corrected independently, directly in context, and the entire result can also be boosted as a, as a whole. So there's a lot of flexibility there. And essentially, it's called blend and comp. And again, purpose is to blend an input one over an input two, the result of that blended over a background. Moving forward, we have a bunch of, uh, of tools that really, you know, uh, should have been there for a while but never made their way into Flame. And so uh, let's talk about a couple of them. One is Deform. And so Deform is a tool. Let me switch back to video here. Deform is a tool that essentially allows you to, uh, to apply all sorts of deformation algorithms. And the choice here is crumple, magnify, pinch, ripple, twirl, and wave. So for any of these deformations, you can actually uh, 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 control the position of the deformation field over the image. But if you choose so you can also move the image underneath uh, the, the transformation or the result of the transform as a whole. So th that, that's the purpose of these three different sections here. Um, if you look at magnify, well, essentially what it does, it allows you to, uh, there you go, it allows you to, uh, again, do a magnification effect, which can be uh, damped uh, on, on the borders. Um, pinching does the opposite. Uh, ripple is something that will create, well, a ripple effect that you can animate over time. Um, twirl, well, creates a twirl, nothing really new there. 
and wave creates a wave pattern that again you can move. This is I'm doing this here on a, on a 2K image. You can see that it's very interactive. All of these effects are GPU optimized and support uh, GPU accelerated anti-aliasing for uh, for good quality filtering. Um, bump Displace is another one of these tools which actually simulates a displacement map and you can control a light and you see again here I'm manipulating this on a 2K image and it would kind of perform a similar effect to what you would get if you did a, a displacement map with a resolution set to one inside of action. So as you see it's, it's very interactive. I can move my, uh, my light around. I can control how much softness I want on my effect to create that plastic look and um, I can control um, also how much shininess I want. So if I want my, uh, my specular highlights to be very, uh, very diffuse, very bright, uh, if I want to blast my, my highlights here, all of those controls I have access to here. And, um, uh, and um, uh, I can also uh, control the, uh, the amount of displacement that I want to create. So whether it's a negative displacement or if it's a positive displacement, both are available. Again, something that's very interactive, uh, that's meant to allow you to create um, all sorts of looks uh, without necessarily having to go inside of action and deal with an actual uh, polygonal displacement map. Um, edge detect is something, again, that uh, you know should have been there for a, for a while. It is uh, really... Uh, a tool that's dedicated to color edge detection provides a range of different options, whether it's, uh, you know, if you want to have uh, uh, monochromatic uh, edges or if you want just the chroma, uh, the edge detection to happen on the chroma in HLS color space or in RGB color space. You can at any point in time decide how precise and refined your edges should be. You have access over a bunch of uh, um, uh, parameters to deal with a threshold. You can activate double edges if that's what you you want. Uh, you can also have a directional uh, edge detection where you control the angle. Um, and of course, the interesting thing is that all of this can actually be mixed with um, can actually be mixed with uh, a blend mode. So at any point in time, you can decide to output the edges only, or you can choose to actually mix them over your input image. Uh, and, uh, and you have a selection of, uh, of different, uh, of different uh, blend types, uh, pretty much everything that you can dream of, really, uh, to create all sorts of funky effects. So that's, uh, that's really it for, uh, for edge detection. Another really uh, cool uh, uh, little node that we have here is damage. Now damage is, uh, is essentially a tool that's dedicated to simulate all sorts of different um, uh, damage types, whether it's film, video, or even digital damage. Uh, it, uh, it actually has a lot of possibilities and you could spend a lot of time just experimenting. But essentially, if you uh, look at uh, at the interface, you'll see that the damage type offers you essentially three types of different damage, film, analog video, and digital video. Now, in film, you will, you will typically get uh, here two sections that allow you to control what would be typically film defects versus projection defects. It's highly interactive, so as I move forward, it's actually generating all the defects almost in real time. So it's, it's very optimized, GPU optimized. And essentially, the, the, the way that you would uh, uh, handle this is every time you want to uh, adjust the advanced parameters of any of, these, uh, of uh, any of these defects, you simply select it, and the advanced controls appear on this side of the UI. At any point in time, you can mute some of the effects or reactivate them. If we switch to analog video, well, you see this is the type of effects that you get. It's a different type. Um, and, and as you see, I can switch from one to the other, and it remembers its settings in any kind of the defects mode. So here, I'm more into the uh, analog video uh, domain with all sorts of uh, tracking uh, problems on the VTR, interferences. The principle of the, uh, of, uh, of, the, um, of the UI is exactly identical. On one side, I control VTR typical defects, and on this side, I can actually control things that, are have, that have more to do with the broadcasting uh, problems that you can encounter. Counter. Last but not least, the digital video that will try to simulate compression artifacts, uh, all sorts of digital drops, 
Um, and again, as you see, it's always extremely interactive. Now, in this case, I only have this particular set of parameters, but it's the same concept. I can simply click on any of these buttons to expose the advanced parameters and control them, control them over time, control their spacing in time, their amounts, all of that, a lot of control. And again, um, as you see, something that's uh, relatively reactive. Um, also, what we're uh, introducing here is a new depth of field tool. And all the tools that I've shown you uh, so far in, in this particular uh, section are actually available uh, in, in Flame and Smoke. Uh, they're labeled as uh, Flame Effects. And so Smoke, for the first time, gets a depth of field tool. That's, uh, that's, and that's also true for Smoke on the Mac. Um, and uh, this depth of field tool essentially allows you, so this is a linear image. I'm going to uh, uh, switch to a, a linear uh, uh, a linear uh, viewport. And uh, uh, the way that you deal with this tool is relatively straightforward. You essentially decide uh, what you want to see in focus. And it then applies the defocus algorithm that I showed you earlier, uh, earlier on in, 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 in the blur node. Um, it, uh, it, is, it is a slice-based uh, uh, depth of field algorithm. And when you adjust the number of slices, the depthogram actually shows you where the slices are located. So this is some, a bit of a visual help to understand sometimes if you can't get something in, in, in focus, uh, well, you can actually adjust the slices according to what, uh, to what it to what depth effect you actually want to generate. The slope here controls how fast you actually get your maximum blur value. Um, and obviously, the, 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 the higher the slope is, uh, the drastic the blur effect is going to be within your depth budget. One thing to really understand about depth of field is that it will not handle any depth information that is beyond the 0, 1 range. Um, it automatically clips any negative value. But if you have any depth value that uh, sits outside of 1 or that are superior to 1, it is very important that you bring them back within the 0, 1 range. So here I just did that. With a uh, with a uh, with a color correct, um, in order to uh, again make sure my depth information is actually located in the zero one range. So keep that in mind. Uh, otherwise, you will get some uh, uh, some very uh, unexpected results and unwanted results.